Hello everyone, welcome back to Mortal Empires, the Clan Angry oh, Campaign. Man. Last time, we got some pretty good strategic gains, kicked Grimgor Ironhide's oh, ass up out. between his ears, and we're going to do a few By more things this command. turn. Belgar's army is down a thing, but I think we can take Barag to Wasbag anyway. As we saw, I've a line of orc fine. boys is not really all that dangerous to us. And it, as it would basically be more of the same, let's just demolish this with auto resolve. And good God, my front line got chopped up. Auto resolve is not often kind to dwarven front lines. It's not too good at acknowledging their very, very high armor. Because dwarves do have very high armor ratings. Dwar Longbeards have the same universal armor as Chaos Chosen. Ah, the Scholar Guard and Nor Grimling's Iron Fuck Yes! Ah, the Hammer of Engrund! Raise or sack three different settlements belonging to the Greenskins. Good thing I'm in the Badlands and the other dwarves haven't wiped out the Greenskins yet. By the way, something I'd just like to note. If you have a grudge against a certain faction, like that says, oh, you need to kill a hero of faction, fooba dooba wabba boo. A completely valid option is to go, I don't really want to try and train up my heroes. I am just going to demolish literally every single enemy settlement and army. Completely exterminate their entire kind. That is completely valid, and even a good idea at times. Also, I'm not going to upgrade Burag to Wasbag, because in three turns I'll be able to get Doc Karaz to level three, meaning I can get it walls. And that, to me, is something more important than upgrading Burag to Wasbag right now. For the, wisdom of the you know other suggestions on how I should do that? Leave them in the comments. I'll listen to them. Well, unless it's, like, blatantly gibberish. But I doubt you guys would actually put blatant gibberish in my comments. You all seem like good people. Next turn, I'm going to march on Franca Hills and kick Warzag's ass again. Billy guy, I, am I say again because I'm pretty sure I've beaten him up already. Not Sneaky Snyder, not Moonslaker, not Undeath Descendant, not Leash Killer, not Great Green... No, no, it's Great Green Killer. When you stake a swing at the Great, at the Prophet, you smite Gork and Mork as well. Good. I'm going to get the Terrifying Mask of E for Belagar because dwarves, sorry, not dwarves, orcs don't have all that good leadership universally. Also, I'm going to give this Thane of mine some better gear. I have a Tormentor Sword I can throw at him. Do I have a Talisman I can throw at him? No. I could give him a Talisman of Preservation, but eh. Dwarf Bride, I think I'll give him, and that's about it. Dwarf Brides are really quite good. I also like their flavor text, really. It says that dwarves will get, when they marry, will seek out, will get a gift from the bride's family of a bride's weight in gold. And this is why dwarves, dwarven women are chosen by weight often. Not because so much the weight is attractive as the weight gets them gold. Greed, everybody! <laughs> ah, breed. Greed, not breed. All right, Manfred. I think I made peace with Manfred, honestly. Hopefully he'll, you know, accept the peace. I don't really want to have to try and push him back as well as rebels. Now, I don't think rebels will grow as they siege, but they might. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to swing Belgar upwards, because he's right here right now, right here. My plan is to make him go here, take a green skin province, and it won't let me highlight that, because of course it won't. Uh, yeah, right here, I want to take that province, and then I'm going to swing up through here, to here, and all around over to here, and hopefully take the entire region of Zuffbar back. If I'm still at war with the Vampire Counts. If I'm at peace with them, I'd like to keep that so I can focus more down south on the Greenskins and defeating their various forces. The Muniskits are already doing dumb shit. Hello, Ogak Bone Crusher. I need to kick your ass. Still, though, I really would like to get Thorgrim. Getting the abil getting the anti-undead and anti greenskin grudges rolling for my entire faction be so nice, because I'm pretty sure his grudges are faction-wide. I haven't messed with him too much, though, so they may have been changed into just his army. Which would be kind of annoying, but I wouldn't, you know, complain too much. It was pretty nice to have faction-wide bonuses against entire, you know, factions. <sighs> Do I want... I'm confederating. I can't take the public order. Ah, Brock Iron Pick. Does that finish his army? That does, in fact, finish Brock Iron Pick's army. Let's swing him over to here. Meanwhile, we're going to go kick Warzag's ass again. Yes, again. I'm not going to fight it for hopefully obvious reasons. Whoa! Why does it think he's going to do- Oh, because he has a bajillion regiments of renown. That's why it thinks he's going to do well. It's thinking that a bunch of regiments of renown are going to compensate for having the front line of a drunken anus. Yeah, Effigy of the Git is kind of interesting, honestly. Also, Warzag is kind of odd, because he's... He's almost like a brawly caster, really. He's pretty tough. Do I want to auto-resolve this? I might lose a unit. On the other hand, I'd also waste time in the Let's Play. We're auto resolving it. Don't want to waste time. Oh, I lost the unit of long beards. That's crippling, actually. I, I should not have auto resolved that, ladies and gentlemen. I could have fought that and gotten much better performances. Yuck! 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 That was a screw up on my part, ladies and gents. I'm sorry. Never. Uh, the throng is mustard. Lun, join the army so you can train up the troops. Actually, no, wait, that isn't crippling. That isn't crippling. I had thought yes. that was crippling, but no. No, this is actually an opportunity. Iron Breakers. Iron Breakers have charge defense versus all and immune to psychology. I am I know charge defense versus all is universal, and I'm pretty sure the immune to psychology is too. Let's look at this and make very sure that it is. No, they don't. Oh well, they still have, you know, universal charge defense versus all. Which doesn't sound like much, until you realize that a lot of the benefits of the orcs is that they have a very high charge, charge bonus. Meaning that on the charge, they're going to great, deliver a very nasty shock, and, they, and they're going to try and keep that shock going, as it were. I don't care about Barag Dwa's bag's little settlement upgrade. Alright. Time for the reckoning. Going to take three turn, two more turns to get to 
Barak Var with this army, at which point I'm going to probably try and push out somewhat, but not too hard. I don't want to push the Greenskins back too much, and I am still at war with the Vampire Count, so grabbing Oakenhammer and kicking their shit in is completely viable as an option. Good! And Reinhardt Jaeger is growing his army. I might lose Zuffbar to a bunch of Reb- Oh, shit! You all remember what Graveguard did in the last episode, ladies and gentlemen. I'm certain you do, because- and if you don't, go rewatch it! I got my ass kicked by them! I mean, I won, but that was a nasty fight with those Graveguard. Alright. I need to beat up Man Lane, stab a mutinous git, take back eight peaks, and give us and give Ekron a good smack. Ekron is down here. It's actually a pretty dangerous place because it has savage orcs. And savage orcs have the annoying habit of having physical resistance instead of armor, meaning that armor piercing damage doesn't actually matter. Despite dealing my troops dealing actually pretty decent AP damage. So I do know, Longbeards technically have higher weapon strength, and they have a higher charge bonus than Iron Breakers, but this massive difference in melee defense and in armor of Iron Breakers, in my opinion, along with their grenades, you're going to see the grenades the next time we fight, unless it's against, you know, like, some tiny rebellion or something. I'm not going to play and fight with some tiny-ass rebellion I need to crush with Belagar along the way. But, yeah, the grenades of the Iron Breakers make them much, much more dangerous than their mere stat line suggests. 60 range and 69 missile damage. A lot nastier than you'd think. Also, look at my rangers. I'm going to have to replace them, but they are very nice right now. So... Nothing left I can think of doing unless I want to upgrade Barag to Waz bag. I don't. I want to wait two turns. I want to upgrade Doc Karaz, which has walls, so I can use this as a fortification point against assaults from this direction. Barag to Waz bag is basically expendable. I'm going to demol get this demolished. I'm going to turn it into another guardhouse to buff the garrison at Varenka Hills. My income has taken a major hit because, well, I'm playing Angrid, I'm basically running three stacks instead of two. If I was just running two natural stacks instead of two expense buff stacks, yeah, I'd be doing a lot better right now. Bronze Steelbeard is moving up, and he is... Thank you, Bronze Steelbeard. You are a good dwarf. Hey, Thorgrim. How's your life? You have a lot of Thunderers. That's interesting. I don't actually like using gun units much in this game because you seem that I like to put my ranged units behind my melee units so they don't get the shit kicked. Wow. The dwarf AI must have gotten a buff because that's actually a really solid army. Oh, he's got Slayers, and Slayers are terrible, but that is a really solid army. I'm probably going to lose Zuffbar. I don't even think I should fight it at this point. That they, they have three cards of Grave Guard, and I can't kill all of that with towers and shooting people. There's just Yeah. I mean if Belagar gets there in time, I'd be happy to crush them. It'd be really cool if you could have fights where the enemy was forced into a siege battle, but your troops came up behind them. So they had to deal with not only you attacking them in the siege, but also the troops in the castle, garrisoning the castle and forcing them to try and take it. That'd be a really neat battle. I'm not sure if the engine is capable of doing that though. I've certainly never seen it myself and I've attacked a lot of sieging army and I've fought a lot of sieging armies off by bringing in back troops. But still, it would be interesting. Not sure how practical it would be, so.
I forget. If I had Belagar kick the shit out of Azhag, I just can't remember which orcs, orc legendary lords I've beaten up. Beating up Azhag would be nice though. If I haven't done it. Yep, it's a fight. Yep, I'm gonna lose, cause three cards of Graveguard will chunk these troops apart so hard you wouldn't even believe. Plus, those Vargais are actually pretty dangerous if you don't have the ranged troops to gut them. And I have about 40%. No, actually, I have half a card of Thunderers and half a card of Quarrelers. That will not kill two full cards of Vargais, especially as monstrous creature numbers have been buffed for two. And there goes Zephbar, and there go my. And up go my upkeep costs. Lovely! Everyone loves more expensive troops, right? If you love more expensive troops, you're a fragging moron. Like, I'll just be blunt. More expensive troops is bad. Well, unless, you know, it's more expensive because they're higher quality, but that's not something that the game... Yeah, it's not what the game simulates, it's not in the way that you usually think of. Let's move... Now, I'm in an allied province. They have an alliance with me and I have military access. It should be fine. Zorica. Yeah, I'm still replenishing. I'm not replenishing as much, but I'm still replenishing, so that's good. There's a rebellion that's going to happen at Barak Var. Well, Barak Var does have no garrison buffs. I'm not worried about that because Brock Ironpick is coming right in. He can just go... I have a full stack and you're a starting rebellion army. You're going to get your shit pushed in. Because let's face it, they're going to get their shit pushed in. Next turn, Doc Karaz will get walls, and I'll probably get it. Rather, I'll start working on the path to getting Doc Karaz walls. It will still take four turns, and then three more turns for a total of seven turns. But hey, at least I'll be able to locally recruit Longbeards, and that will help it as having a more local replenishment point than moving all the way over here back to Karak Izor. Which would, you know, be a bit of a nuisance. Just a bit. Hmm. Oh, Skaven Blade is now tier 4. Nastier Garrison. Let's see if it has anything interesting here, like a unique building. No. That's a pretty nasty thing, though. Warp Lightning Cannons can now be recruited by the Skaven. Warp Lightning Cannons are very scary. Like, they're probably a- like, they're a top tier... Really... They, uh, they're a very top tier bit of artillery. Also, I do like this. Weapon burrows, where sky, combustible sky or techno weapons are stored, are not jealously guarded, because if incompetently handled, the user will quickly perish. We don't need to guard these. If you don't know exactly what you're doing, you're going to die horribly from trying to use them. It's a very Skaven defensive measure. Welcome, friends of the Dowie. Dang, they're only a strength <laughs> rank below me. Honor to your ancestors. Hey, Kadrin. You mind a military alliance? We're at war with the same people. Sure enough. Wait, is that a... That can't be right. Is that a Dwarven settlement owned... Was that a Dwarven settlement owned by Kislev? Oh, no, that's just Fort Jakova. I thought that was a dwarf settlement that had been taken over by Kislev, so I was like... The shit's going on, mate! <laughs> but it wasn't, because I'm crazy. Ignore my dumb derpery. Seems the undead are pushing pretty hard. I'm going to need to kick the shit out of them and raise all their territory, because I'm not interested in Sylvania. It's got a uh, local populace of three for corruption, and that's no fun to deal with. Plus, I don't think I've gotten Valet. Yeah, I haven't gotten Valet's Protection or Rat Poison. Once I get those, I think I might hit Sylvania. Right now, though... Probably going to go for militia training, maybe, or... No, I think I'll go for ammunition wagons and then volley fire. After I get vanguard proficiency. Because that means I'll have more... 
more ammo, and I'll be able to shoot said ammo out faster. It'll use now reload speed reduction does use up your troops' ammo faster because you know you're putting more shots in the air. But, it, but I generally consider it worth it to invest heavily in it, simply on the grounds that well. Putting more ammunition in the air faster means more ammunition hits your enemy faster, meaning your melee troops have to do less work. Killing the enemy faster. Pretty useful. Um, what? Oh, the rebellion cropped up and Thorgrim immediately crushed to pieces. I'll take some extra money, I guess. Thank you, Thorgrim. Dang, that's some nice weaponry. Ungrim, on the other hand, has none of his nice weaponry. He does have his unbreakable and death blow, though. Death blow basically means if you're very low on health, you become a lot more dangerous, but if you're very low on health, you're probably going to die anyway. should slay you where you stand. Are you going to sue for peace? Hmm. What are the odds? Hi. How much money will you give me for peace? 900 gold. I'll take it. Always extort more money out of your enemies if you plan to wipe them out eventually. Border princes are moving around and doing stuff. Nothing really important. Oh! Crack and Drac is still around. It'd be kind of funny if it turned out that I go up to the north and I'm expecting to run into a bunch of Norse skins and all that. And then suddenly I turns out that Crack and Drac has just taken over the entirety of Norska because really heavy infantry is something that well, the Norskin ar army faction does have a good counter to dwarves, but, well, the AI isn't too good at using its monstrous creatures. Plus, more, even more other champions will fall down against anything short of dwarf warriors. Long beards are about a match for their high-end infantry, and iron breakers will turn Marauder champions into piles of pus. Honestly, iron breakers aren't quite as good if you're for if you're attacking as long beards, but that's the important. But Jettying on. they have another big advantage: their explosives are amazing. Oh, Karak Norn is now a dwarf hole. Invest in your money. What else should I invest in? Ooh. I don't think I want to build this up as a military province. 
What I will do, though, is get the Engineer's Workshop for the sake of getting the plus 4% research rate. I could work towards getting a Gromril Forge, though. Gromril Forge let me put a runesmith in that army I have and complete it. On the other hand, my ma my capital settlement is also capable of getting a Gromril Forge eventually. It'll just take a little longer. Uh, should I? Shouldn't I? Should I? Shouldn't I? We're going for the workshop because of that research rate. Dwarves have a lot of technology and it takes a while to build it all up, but once you get it building, it is very nice indeed. There's some very fancy tricks out there. Some people say that dwarves can't innovate. Usually they can't, but hey, it's a game. Let us begin. So, Brock, your little army is going to be moving out. Maybe I should take the Western Badlands. No, no, that this has an orc guardhouse in it. Never mind. Don't want to push that. In that case, I think I'll explore over this way. Is over that way is something I'm very interested in. Karak Eight Peaks. By the way, the fact that you don't actually know where Karak Eight Peaks is in your first game is Clan Angerand. Assuming Clan Angerand is the first faction you play, I wouldn't recommend Clan Ingrid being the first faction you play, mind. If it's the first faction you've played, it's really annoying. Like, it is really annoying. Greetings, honorable ally. You could go up to 191. If I offer you some money, though, will you take a confederation? Never. No, I... Karak Kadrin, they do own... Three whole, four Aye, whole settlements. Let's hear what you have to say. We'll hear it before Oath They don't like me as much, but they're a lot weaker, so they're more likely to accept confederation. No. I can't afford a war with Templehof right now. Much as I'd like to go to war with Templehof, I can't actually afford to go to war with Templehof right now. Keyword, right now. I do intend to eventually wipe the undead and let the Empire take this place, because I'm not interested in this territory. I am interested in the place stuff the Border Prince's own, as it would let me trade. It's the only way for Clan Angren to trade, unless you go and wipe out Maragliano instead. But Maragliano has the horrific garrison of seven hand gunners and five mortars. Just... Sit and... Sit and think about that for a moment, okay? That is a lot of guns. That is a lot of gun. That is, in fact, an absurd amount of gun. It will shoot the hell out of my poor dwarves, because it has so much armor piercing. <sighs> Alright. Let's end the turn. Volkmar, Gilt, Franz, if you could, you know, confederate with Nuln, Weissenland technically, but I always refer to them as Nuln because it's something that's stuck in my brain more. If you could do that, that'd be favorite. Hello, Azhag. I didn't actually check if I'd beaten you up, did I? I should probably do that. Probably should. Hello, Helmand Gorse, with you and the Limer Noctis. Are you going to hit Migdal Long Longobarak again? 
Oh, he has the Dells of Schwarzhofen. Those cause terror. Manfred is garrisoning Oakenhammer. And for some reason, he marched Gorst right into my territory and marched them right back out. What? Um, Vampire Counts, what are you doing? Vampire Counts, why? Seriously, the hell, Vampire Counts? <laughs> Apparently, the response is meow. Kind of amusing, really, given my cat is black and the Vampire Counts actually have an amusing follower that gives them plus one public order. It is, of course, a black cat. After all, cats are well known for being orderly and clean creatures, aren't they? It's just one of those things that mildly amuses me. I don't consider cats actually orderly so much as I'm going to be in my place and I don't care what you think. <laughs> if a cat wishes to sit somewhere, you're going to have to displace it physically. It's not going to listen to you or care what you think. It's going to sit there and it's going to do what it wants. Because <laughs> it's a cat sawed you. <laughs> Dwarves, however, don't really have cats. They have goats, but they don't really use them as pets so much as f a food source, both for goat's milk and for goat's meat. I've had goat milk. It's pretty okay. Can't say anything about goat meat, though, because, well, never had it. Heard it stringy, but... Eh. No, I am not turning you into meat. You may hear a certain rumbling in the background. Could you get off of me, please, sir? <laughs> I say after I just went on a bit of a lecture on how cats don't really care what you think, they care what they think. <laughs> I suppose that is a bit silly of me. Can I actually... No, I don't have the range. Okay, force march into Bag to Waz Bag. And get you inspiring presents so I can get to work. Oh wow, that was a quick guarantee. That was a quick plus one for Barag Dwaz bag. That'll help quite a bit. Alright. We're going to fill two grudges with one stone here at Oakenhammer. What's the garrison at No I didn't. What's the garrison building browser wanted the garrison? Has the garrison Yes, the garrison has fully restocked. I think that's probably why the not Zelig, Helmand Gorse backed off, because his army's actually weaker now. He's got a bit more harassment and cavalry and less zombies, but he has less crypt ghouls as well. And he does not have those grave guard that gave me such grief. Let's set this to normal stance. Oh, Oakenhammer has a buffed garrison. What? To battle! For our Oh. Manfred didn't actually bring a proper stack. He brought two heroes. He brought two heroes and some miscellaneous troops. Really, Manfred? Really? You didn't even bother to raise like a bunch of crappy zombies or something? Just so you have meat to throw against my troops to pin them down while you actually have your elites come in and fuck me up the ass? No? Goodbye then, I guess. I was hoping for a good fight here, but no. Goodbye, man lane. Here I was hoping to show off my explosives. Revenge! Apparently, no, I don't get to show off my explosives.
Grumble, 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 grumble. Ah! All of my heroes leveled up. Always good. Cleanse corruption because, you know, I'm going to have some corruption issues these days. What with all the undead around and all. Let's keep working on your melee defense, King Lun. You can get extra powder. You can get extra powder. Extra powder is really, really good because it buffs explosion. It's a passive. Now, this isn't too useful unless you play some of your artillery that explodes, like, well, pretty much every artillery actually has an explosion, just like some have stronger explosions than others. You can see if I scroll over missile down here, it has explosive base damage here, and explosive arm piercing damage here. But point is, it, it also buffs these guys, the iron breakers. Which is kind of ridiculous when you think about it, you know? So, he's really, really good. He makes your grenades hit even harder. And your grenades are going to hit pretty darn hard. Let's give this guy the crown of command. Anything good I can give you? Like a bride or something? When I say it out loud, that sounds weird. Hang on, 15% physical resist more. With this, King One will actually have 90% physical resistance. That's pretty insane. That's pretty insane. All right. For the wisdom of Next the turn, Brock will hit Barak Dwaz back, and we can. And I think we're going to leave. Uh, I think I'm going to leave Belagar in here for a little bit so he can replenish his troops. They're a bit dinged up. Then again, I could march over to Zephbar. And this frag and take it. But I don't think Oak and Hammer could, you know, fight off an assault. Karag, Dromar, I could give them a damn good fight. You saw what happened when I actually, you know, fought a full stack from Grens no. off of Gorst from Grenstat. What do you give when I kill you? Maybe I'll find out when I kill you. Mm. Need to stab a crooked moon. Need to take eight peaks, which is most of my grudging. You can see it up here. Minus four leadership isn't too bad, honestly. I prefer if I had satisfied, though, solely because of public order plus one. Welcome, friends of the Dowie. You like me a good bit more now. If I offer you some money, will you join up with me and give me your lovely, lovely realm? Won't even consider it. Okay. Good to know. Are there any interesting chapter objectives this go? Yeah, I'm not going to really do that. I'm working on the Engineer's Guild Hall. Working on the grudges. Heroic victory. Heroic victories are very hard indeed. Oh! I actually just popped one dwarf hold at a time. That's gonna be a good bit of cash. Always good to have more cash, especially gonna be in investing in Zephbar, getting it walls, at least the baseline ones, because I need to keep Drakenhof contained. Keep them contained. Keep them contained. <laughs> I love that voice. It's a fun voice to make. Mm -hmm. 
whatever. Nothing left to do now, but oh, in the yeah. turn, I guess. Gonna be three turns until those guys are replenished. Going to be four until those. Going to be four until those. Going to be five until those. But by the time these guys are fully replenished, you're good. What's in the turn, I guess? Next turn, our rangers will be faster and they'll be harder to hit in melee combat. That'll be very helpful indeed for getting them out of melee combat. If they're forced to play combat, they'll last a little longer and therefore kill a little more. I do object to that, eh? It looks like the Grudge Bearer is moving out and slowly taking back the territories. Good job, my fellow Dawi. Good job. It's nice to see the AI being proactive for once. Usually you have to drag them into actually fighting and figuring out, hey, I should actually do things. I am revenge incarnate. So, who's fine? Know this and weigh your words. Are you going to sue for peace? Yes, you are. Can I eat any more money out of you? No, I can't. I'll take the peace, though. Now I can just take back Zuffbar and not worry about assault. That will be very nice indeed, especially as I kicked out, kicked out Manfred's army and therefore got, you know, that grudge fulfilled. Fulfilling grudges is good. Sometimes you can get nice events like faction-wide public order out of them. Faction-wide public order is also good! Come on, hurry up! I can't even see enough of the world map to care about all these factions! Yay! Yay! It's going to be interesting to see what the situation is at 8 Beats, though. They've been maintaining a wall for a while, which is very worrisome. Very, very worrisome. So it implies they're going on a continuous combat spree. And they've got a pretty high strength rank, too. Plus, unlike Skarsnick, they aren't limited to goblins. Until you take 8 Beats. But again, maybe they do have Skarsnick, no goblins to Lake Peaks, but they don't care about it because they have eight peaks. Sorry, not no goblins to Lake Peaks, only goblins to Lake Peaks. It's one of the big issues Skarsnick has. You have to make do with goblins until eight peaks. And it really sucks because goblins are awful. You've got to rely on your monstrous creatures, and they're not very good either. The main line of the Greenskin army has always been, and always will be, the Orc. Oh, mighty lord. The fates have surely selected you for greatness. Thanks to my guidance, your tremendous power grows as if driven by some divine power. Hi! Your enemies I'm the divine tremble power. before you. I'm kind of a git, and I'm playing with your lives for the fun of people on the internet! Anyway, Meta aside! Vanguard clan will know greatness again! Belgar has declared it, and his is a fierce and renowned determination. A dwarf's oath is his honor, and his words his bond. The regions outside of Dawi control must be reclaimed, and made part of the dominion as soon as possible. What other objectives are there, perhaps? Research 50 technology. Holy shit! 
I'm not going to be getting that anytime soon. Reach rank 20 with one hero is perfectly possible. Probably going to reach 20 with a lord, too. Ancestor tombs. I think that's a building in Eight Peaks. I'm not sure what Rick means, though. I've not actually heard that one. It is time. All right, move down this way. Let us see what Eight Peaks has to offer. It is purely an exploration force. I do not intend to attack or take Eight Peaks with this. I feel this must be emphasized. Oh, he has the Hammer of Gork, which has the Great Green Wallop. 26. It has the Blinded Effect. Same as the Stegodon's laser stack. Actually, was it a Stegodon or a Bastilodon that had the laser? Whatever. Let's go to Zephbar and search its ruins in hopes that we might find something vaguely interesting. Um. Shouldn't I be able to read these ruins as a dwarf? This event doesn't make much sense. If I actually had people I could trade with, that would be lovely! Where's the Imminent Rebellion? It's in Zephbar with Karag Dromar! Well, I think I'll be able to kick the shit out of any undead rebellion. I'm pretty sure it'll be an undead rebellion. Heck, I've got an army right around here. All right, let's see what that, if I can do anything with that trinket maker, shall we? Nope, it's just wait for Oaken Hammer to upgrade. Okay. I'm not going to take a lot of casualties from this little burst of vampiric corruption, but I will take some. However, it's unlikely that Vlad will be able to build up a sufficient force to take his off bot. That's not Vlad, that's Kemler. Bad Archangel. Bad. No biscuit. Point is, my opponents will be unlikely to build up enough for a force to take me on in a fight. It is an honor. Wow, you went up plus six in a turn. No, I don't want to end your military my military access pact. Why would I do that? Um, no thank you. No thank you. I need peace with them right now so I can build up a line of defenses, Thorgrim. Also, you're not actually fight fighting them, but I won't say that to Thorgrim's face. He's the High King. Very rude. I'm going to have to swear the Slayer Oath for being a gigantic dickwad. I'm going to swear the Slayer Oath. That'd be bad. Anyway! What else is there to do? What else is there to do? <sighs> Honestly, maybe I shouldn't work toward... Maybe I should get ammunition wagons, and then I should get O's of loyalty and High King's authority. Because that would help a lot with my rebellion issues. Dwarves can get very, very high public order very, very easily. And unfortunately, unlike the High Elves, they don't have something that makes you better at high public order. It's kind of odd, but whatever. You'd think the faction who's all about being orderly would be good at that, but whatever. I think Eight Peaks is right about there. Your objective to the next turn will be to move to here. Ah, uh, ammunition wagon. Such a nice tech. Running out of ammunition is for other races. Where are the Dowie? 
Granted, you're still probably going to run out of ammunition because the next tech basically makes it irrelevant that you have more ammunition, but it also means you can put out more ammunition and kill the enemy faster. And you know, I'd rather be out of arrows than be out of troops. Arrows replenish after every battle, troops generally don't. Unless you're fighting fellow Dawi, then you can press them into service. I do not like fighting my fellow Dawi that much. As Hag, if you move into a normal stance range, I might kick your ass. You're not in normal stance range, I will not go and kick your ass. Also, I'm going to colonize Zuff Barn. Sit, sit around Zuff Bar for a bit with Belgar just to get him rolling. Oh, Kemlar actually got up. Kemlar, I swear to fuck. No. He did it. He did it. He did not just do that. He did not just do that. Heinrich Kemmler, you absolute shit! Welp, that's a grudgeon! Lens. <sighs> this and land, if you could join up with the Empire, that'd be nice for me. They make pushing back this giant blob of undead much easier. Because I can trade with the Empire, then I can make a lot of money. Which would be nice, because if I make money, I can kick ass more. But of course, you're not going to consider that, are you? You're an independent elector cow who doesn't need any emperor to tell them what to do. And you're going to get your shit pushed in for it. is doing things at least. I have no idea what they're doing, but they're definitely doing the thing. Uh, could the Blood of Axe tribe just go away and get themselves killed already? This is getting tiresome seeing this just them just moving around again and 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 again Sorry. I'm a little frustrated with it. Just a little. <sighs> Seriously though, having a faction wiped out that's roaming like that can only help the turn timer go faster. Because a roaming whore, because while if a faction is wiped out by having its, all of its settlements taken, that could slow down. That just means there's another bigger faction Someone is wiped out and it's a roaming horde. That means instead. That it is simply gone. Hey. What? One rug! Welcome, Ken. How are the High Kings, sir? Not by me. If I offer you money, will you accept? Doubtful. Yes. And now I'm unreliable. Shit. Cause I just broke a peace treaty. Ancestors, heroes. 
Well, frack you, it's Heinrich Kamalar. Now I own this cursed province. Next level, we can do things. Move. Um, how many stacks is that? episode here ladies and gentlemen we're not going to be taking eight peaks until I can at least get Zuff Bar to the point where I think it'll be able to hold off any undead incursions so if you have any questions comments or suggestions especially on how to deal with eight peaks and the fact that they have two stacks and a wah leave them in the comment section below or the threads on space battles and sufficient velocity that will be linked in the description. And for now, goodbye! Fucking wah! For this long.